Mr. Robert. It's Miss Wilson from Kimball Elementary. How are you? I'm great. And I'm Mr. Robert, and I'm the librarian from Rox Hill and Highland Park Elementary Schools. And I need to give a shout out to school librarians. Last Saturday was National School Librarians Day. And so I want to give a shout out to all the school librarians out there. Oh my goodness. Librarians do such great work. As do classroom teachers. Uh, Ms. Wilson, what have you been doing to take care of yourself? I've been baking a lot of cookies and banana bread. Oh, that's right. You're supposed to be sending me some chocolate chip cookies, if I remember correctly. Yes, I want to make sure they don't melt in the mail delivery package. Oh, good. <laughs> well, I'm trying to take care of myself by making sure that I get in 10,000 steps every day. Wow. Have you been walking around the neighborhood? I've been uh, doing a little bit of walking around the neighborhood, but I've also been on the, I've got a treadmill in the house. So I've been walking the treadmill and walking in the backyard and walking around the house, but I've been getting in my 10,000 steps. So that's a good thing. Congratulations. Way to stay healthy. Thank you. I'm trying, especially if you send me those cookies, I'll need those 10,000 <laughs> steps. Uh, Ms. Wilson, I thought we would look today at math practice three. Okay. And I wrote it in kid language here. And Math Practice 3 says, I can explain my thinking and listen to others' thinking. Mm. You know, I was thinking um, we'll be doing that today when we're talking about math, but, you know, we can also do that in art. Wow, that's great. Explaining like our it? thinking and listening to others is something I was working on with my second graders. Oh, there you go. Were they listening to you? Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to spend, we're going to look at an image of art and we're going to talk about it. Sound good? Perfect. Great. Be right back. Okay. Hi, Miss Wilson. Are you ready to look at a piece of art? Yes, I'm excited. All right. I just want to tell you this is a piece of art that I bought a couple of years ago, and the artist is David Lasky and David Lasky is um, he did the coloring he was the colorist for the book El Defo uh, by CC Bell which came out a few years ago um, so take a look at this image quite the image <laughs> and Miss Wilson what's going on in this image well I see a giant slug. All right, so Ms. Wilson says that she sees a giant slug. What more can you find? I think the slug is attacking Seattle. All right, Ms. Wilson says that she thinks the slug is attacking Seattle. Ms. Wilson, what do you see in the image that makes you say the slug is attacking Seattle? Well, I see that there's the space needle in the background and the slug looks really big, almost as big as the space needle. So that means it's like a monster slug. All right, Ms. Wilson says that she notices that this is the space needle here, and she notices that this slug is as big as the space needle. Um, and so that's what makes her think that this is Seattle <clears throat> and that the slug is attacking Seattle. What more can you find, Ms. Wilson? Uh, the train. The train reminds me of the monorail that goes from the space needle to. Uh, Westlake, Westlake Center. All right, so Miss Wilson says she notices the monorail and she thinks this is, she knows that the monorail goes from um, Seattle Center to downtown at Westlake Center. What more can you find, Miss Wilson? Mm -hmm. I see lots of people and they look scared. All right, Miss Wilson notices lots of people and they look scared. What do you see in the image that makes you say they're scared? Well, all their eyes, especially the eyes of the people 
coming towards the front are really big and their mouths are open like they're screaming. All right, so Miss Wilson says that she thinks that these people are scared because their eyes are wide open and their mouths are open like they're screaming. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. Miss Wilson, we could probably spend another hour talking about this uh, piece of art, but um, I think it's time to uh, do a little math game. What do you think? Oh, I'd love a math game. Thank you for sharing this really interesting picture. Absolutely. Look forward to the math game. See you soon. <laughs> Bye. So Ms. Wilson and I just had a conversation using visual thinking strategies to talk about art. And if you're interested in doing that at home, you can go to the VTS website every day and look at a new image. I'm going to show you how to get there. I'm going to share my screen with you. And here is the address to get to the VTS website. It's vtshome.org forward slash daily dash image forward slash. And if you type that into your address bar, you will get here to the VTS website and you will see the three questions every day. You'll see the three questions that you can use to have the discussion. What's going on in this picture? What more do you see that makes you say da 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 da? And what more can you find? And there'll be a new image every day. You can enlarge the image and have your discussion. This is a great way to talk about art. And we're going to use these questions later to think about math. But right now, Ms. Wilson's going to do a math game with us. Take it away, Ms. Wilson. And we're back to do our math game. We are going to play pig again, but this time we're going to add a challenge. Joining me today is my friend, City Bear. City Bear was a gift from my teacher friend, Miss Christy. City Bear and I are going to play pig, but instead of rolling one dice, we're going to roll two. That means twice the addition. So instead of dice, I have my handy dandy containers with the numbers one through six folded up on pieces of paper. You'll need to make an extra one so that you can pull numbers randomly. Instead of Rochambeau, I think I'll go first to model what this new challenge means. The rules are the same. If you pull the numbers two, three, four, five, or six, you get to add them to your bank. If you pull the number one, and all your points go away for that turn. The challenge is, because now you pull two dice or pull two numbers, you have an extra chance to get a number one. So let's try to get to 100 using two dice. I pull one from here and I pull one from the other container. My numbers are, <gasps> doesn't even matter what my other number is. I got a one. City Bear, it is your turn. I'm gonna mark my first turn. Nothing, zero. And pulling for City Bear. Shake, shake, shake. Yes. We've got the number four and two. City Bear, what's four plus two? Oh, you're right, four plus two is six. It's already in City Bear's bank. They have six points. You wanna roll again? Okay, let's do it. Okay, this time they roll three, and hopefully this isn't a one, and two. Now, to add, they can add these numbers together or simply write three and two near the six for that turn. I'm going to add the three and the two together. That equals five. And now, five plus six 
equals 11. Wow, there are so many steps to keep track of, but that's why you've been practicing your skip counting and counting forwards and backwards with me and Mr. Robert. So now on this term, we have plus five equals 11. City Bear, do you want to roll again? I understand. City Bear wants to bank those points. Doesn't want to get a one. All right, then I will fold these back up, put them in my number generator, and this time I've got to catch up. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh. <gasps> I have a two and a three. Yay. Just like my old way of keeping track, I'm going to write two plus three. And I'll add them all up once my turn is over. Putting them back in, I'm taking my chance and rolling again. <laughs> okay. This time I pulled three and one. Oh, all my points go away. I don't get to keep them. Now, this challenge may make the game go faster or slower, depending on how often you get a one. See what differences you can find in this challenge versus the way we played pig with Mr. Robert and on our first lesson with me. Hmm. I wonder which way will be your favorite. All right, good luck playing your game. Great job, City Bear. Now, let's do our number talk. Back with Mr. Robert. See you soon. And it's time for our movement break. For our movement break today, we're going to do toe touches. To do this, you will stand up and you'll be crossing opposite hand to opposite leg. So your right foot, will cross back to your left hand and your left foot will cross back to your right hand. All right, let's count by fours all the way to 28 and then we'll count backwards. Here we go. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. Great job. Let's try it going backwards. Here we go. 28, 24, 20, 16, 12, 8, 4, 0. For an extra challenge, you can go faster or count to a higher number. All right, it's now time for our number talk. Miss Wilson, thanks so much for that movement. Oh, happy to help. I hope those get your heart rate going? It did. It did a little bit. My heart's thankfully beating. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, I want to show you another image mm -hmm. and maybe we'll do some math talk around that. How does that sound? Oh, that sounds lovely. Okay, I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see this image. And I want you to just take a few moments and look at that image. Ooh, how colorful. I went into my backyard and my front yard to make that for you. Miss mm. Wilson, what do you see yeah. in this image? I see flowers, blossoms, and rocks. All right, so Miss Wilson notices some flowers and she sees some blossoms and she sees some rocks. Mm -hmm. What more can you find? Well, I noticed the rocks that there are 12. Oh, Miss Wilson says that she sees 12 rocks. Miss Wilson, what do you see in that image that makes you say there are 12 rocks? Well, the rocks are kind of spaced out in groups of two. So I notice when I skip count by two, I starting from the left, Go two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So, so Miss Wilson, 
I'm sorry, say it last part again. There are what? Six groups. Six groups. Miss Wilson says she notices that the rocks are grouped in pairs, in groups of two, and she notices that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, and that makes her think that there must be 12 rocks. What more can you find? I see pretty orange, kind of pinkish blossoms, and they're in groups of three. So Ms. Wilson says she notices uh, pretty orange pink blossoms in groups of three. Mm -hmm. Groups of three. If I oh, added them. Yeah. I think I could add on because skip counting by three is a little trickier for me. If I go three plus three, that's six. And then six plus three, that's nine. And then nine plus three, that's 12, and 12 plus three is 15. So Miss Wilson used addition to figure out the total number of the blossoms. She started with three plus three, and then added three, and then added three, and then added another three to get 15 blossoms. What more can you find, Miss Wilson? <gasps> can I say something a little trickier? Oh yeah. There are more blossoms than rocks. Uh, what do you see in the image that makes you say there are more blossoms than rocks? Well, the blossoms are in groups of three and the rocks are in groups of two, which means that there are more blossoms because three is bigger than two. But also I could subtract. So there are 15 blossoms and 12 rocks. So can I ask you a question? How yeah. many more how many more blossoms are there than rocks? <gasps> well, then I would do 15 minus 12, which is three. There are three more blossoms than rocks. So Miss Wilson notices that there are 15 blossoms altogether, and she notices that there are 12 rocks altogether. So she knows 15 minus 12 equals three. So there are three more blossoms than there are rocks. Mm -hmm. uh, Miss Wilson, what more yeah. can you find? There are the flowers at the top and there are the most flowers because there are four in each. So Miss Wilson notices that there are four flowers in each of the groups. Mm -hmm. Four flowers in each of the group. Miss Wilson, do you know how many flowers there are are all together? Ooh, that would be, I'm going to use my same strategy of okay. adding on. So if I start at the left, there's four plus four equals eight. Okay. Eight plus four equals twelve. 12 plus 4 equals 16. 16 plus 4 equals 20. And 20 plus 4 equals 24. So Miss Wilson notices that there are 20 floor, 24 flowers altogether, and she figured that out by adding 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. Plus 4. Ms. Wilson, thank you for talking math with me today. And thank you so much for co-teaching these math lessons this week. This was so fun. They were so fun. I love that we did some art today. It's kind of like we can find math everywhere. Math everywhere. Exactly. Ms. Wilson, next week is spring break. Yes. What are you going to do for spring break? I think I'll be outside in the sun, maybe gardening with my friend more. Oh, good. Oh, I saw, I saw his garden. Yeah. That's very good. I'm not a gardener, so I can't help you there. It's a good time to try. <laughs> uh, well, that's true too. I, I've got plenty of time on my hands. I'm gonna be doing some reading next week. It's a good nice. time to get caught up on some books. I can't wait to hear about them. And I can't wait to get back to school. I hope we get back to school soon. 
Me too. So we can see all our friends and colleagues. But you know what? We'll be seeing them online and on TV and and we're going to keep on learning no matter what happens. Exactly. Staying connected and keeping our brains working. Absolutely. Everybody, you guys take care. See you next time. Bye. Bye bye.